Hello. Welcome to your program, Legends of Our Time, on GBC News and Ghana Television. On Legends of Our Time, we bring you inspiring stories from our legends. My name is Gifty AJ, and in a jiffy, I'll be introducing my guest for today. Stay So my guest for today is a former executive director of the Ghana Standards Authority, initially the Ghana Standards Board, Professor Emmanuel Kwesi Mafo. Hi, Professor. Thank you so much for your time. Did you are so grateful. Thank you. You are welcome. Thank you. To my humble home. Thank you. <laughs> 82 years this year. How does it feel to be 82? Hmm. I feel very st strong as at now. Okay. And I'm grateful to God for giving me that strength. Living on this earth for 82 years is no joke. And what's the secret? But God has been faithful to me. Mm. He has kept me safe and sound. What's the secret? Prof, what have you been doing, you know, to stay this strong? All right. Well, I've been working. I started as a teacher, taught in a primary school, uh, or middle school as it was called, at Yabe. Then I left to go for in for further studies mm. at the University of Science and Technology, Kumasi. I graduated in 1968, oh. and then took appointment with the Minister of Education First, I was sent to Takuradi to teach at ESG, Government Secondary Technical. Mm -hmm. Then I came to Winneba, Specialist Training College, as a tutor. Mm -hmm. There, I had a real interesting story to tell later. Sure. Okay, so before we go into your career path, I wanted to know what you have been doing behind the scenes that is making you this fit in terms of nutrition, is it exercising, lifestyle? Want to know exactly what you do, that you are that strong at age 82? I was a very good hockey player. Okay. And a footballer. And also an athlete. When I graduated and I started working, I was still playing football in Tema. Okay. Because I was working with the Unilever as a chemist, and we're playing all together with other um, workers from other institutions or other factories. After that, as a minister of the wo of the world, I'm always very active, moving up and down. When I was young, mm -hmm. I was a secretary to so many. Okay. Uh, committees and again I was the organizer for new life for all in the my area okay so I've been very active and when I left the industry to work with the university when I was a lecturer mm -hmm. again I was still very active playing with students and uh, taking part in other uh, sporting activities and this has kept me very strong. Very strong. Okay, so let's begin with your early days. Um, you were born in Ashanti region, but then you grew up partly in that region and then Bono region. Kindly share with us some childhood memories of the period. I was born in Ashanti, in Sitechebi. Okay. To Madame Trisina Tiwada. A day. And Mr. Openi a day, Kwekwa day. Kwekwa day died very early. So I have never seen my father. Okay. And I have never seen even his picture. Oh. But my mother never married again. So I was taken care of by my mother and my brothers. Hmm. Because my father died very early, my brothers were also very young. Mm. We have to struggle 
struggle. When you say struggle, what does it mean in your context? At age four, I was sent to my father's brother, Mofia, who was a hunter, living in between in Ashayim, a town between Nkwansa and Ijura. Okay. He was a, a real hunter. He killed about 39 elephants. By himself? By himself. Okay. And even he caught a young elephant and brought him home, brought ah. it home. Wow. But everybody in the village or in the town, where it was a small town, or in the area, in the district, feared the name Yabwampo. <laughs> he was very powerful. Very powerful. So at age four, I went to him and uh, introduced me to all sorts of uh, farm activities. And uh, at times he would kill some animal, young little one, and he comes home and he directs me to go and bring it with elderly people. Mm. He would direct me, yeah. giving me the signs to follow. Okay. And I did that until I went to school. He didn't even want me to go to school. Why? Yes, I read in your autobiography that it was the grace, God's grace. By grace, grace of God, yeah, yes. Made him send you to school. So, he sent me where two brothers. He, the other one was my half-brother. But we all stayed with him. So he sent that one to school. And he told me that when I grow up, he will let me learn fitting. A tree, okay. So by God's grace, as you said, I visited some of my friends who were schooling. And I didn't know their father was in the house. So I told the children of my friends, if my father doesn't send me to school and he sends me, I won't go. <laughs> and a man overheard me. Mm -hmm. So and he was a very close friend of my yeah, uncle. Yes. So he went to him, convinced him, so I went to school the third term of the year. Okay. Instead of the first term, you went the third, third term. term. Okay. But fortunately for me, my half-brother has taught me everything he has learned. Okay. He was in primary two, and he, I knew everything in primary one. <laughs> so when I went to school, mm. you know, I tied my cloth around my neck. <laughs> I no, have no footwear. No, no, no. I don't even have school. Uniform, how can I get footwear? <laughs> I went and the school was one teacher, primary school, Catholic school. Okay. And one of the people in class three was teaching. So I joined the class under the tree. And to their surprise, I was able to read almost everything on the board. Ah. So it was reported to the teacher. The boy who came today is able to read everything, but <laughs> some of the old ones couldn't. couldn't. They didn't know that my brother <laughs> taught me in the house. So at the end of the year, mm -hmm. I was promoted to P3. Wow. So you didn't go to class two? No, no, no. no you no. went straight away to class three? I don't know class two. Okay. I went to <laughs> primary three, and my father or my uncle transferred us from Ashayim mm -hmm. to Atunsu. Okay. In the city. That's my father's town. The, the head teacher examined us and we passed, the two of us. So we were all admitted to class three. Okay. And I uh, continued at Atonson Methodist School till I got to middle form one. Mm. Then I, was, I went to Shinyani mm -hmm. Government School. Okay. To stay with one uh, teacher, Mr. Boatin, late Mr. Boatin. It was there, I had a lot of good friends, two of them, oh. late Dr. Asari Ajabin and late uh, Kofi Wood, who were classmates, were very close. And in the school, people used to call us three musketeers. <laughs> well, we were always together. Yeah, close friends. And. Uh, when I went to Sinyani, I taught them how to play hockey because I've learned playing hockey at the Atunsu Methodist. Okay. And they were having hockey bats. They didn't know how to play. So I taught them how to play. And uh, when I got to Form 4, I came to Kumasi, party school. Okay. There, 
But when I was in Form 32, the common entrance I passed, and I couldn't go. Why? The financial problem. I was like, I've been at the Pempe College, but I couldn't make but it. Your uncle was a good hunter, which means he could. Hmm. I mean, the after seven. The thing about hunters is that mm. they will kill all sorts of animals, mm. but they're always poor. Why? According to them, some of the animals they kill are indebted to other animals. And wow. therefore, when you kill it, you inherit the debt. Wow. He was powerful, but he was poor, very poor. So he suffered the feat. So, came to party school, Kumasi, finished the middle from four, and uh, I didn't have anybody to help. But some of my teachers came to talk to my brothers that they should try to send me to school. So they sent me to day school initially. Okay. Um, Aya, and now Santa Maria Secondary School. I was there when our neighbor, late Mrs. Uh, Emilia Sinano, he was the social welfare officer in charge of Ashanti Braham on the north. He was from Keta. Okay. And I was serving her as a houseboy. So he had sympathy on me. One evening he came to my brothers and said, look, Apakitwa has to go to secondary school, boarding house. Mm. So he wanted to send me to Mauli. Secondary. Secondary school. And then my brothers said, Mauli is too far. Then he said, I'll send him to Cape Coast. So he took me in her, her car, went to Cape Coast. I was thinking I could get admission to St. Augustine, uh, mm -hmm. Van Spring or Adisada. Okay. But that was my favorite school. To be Which one? Adisada? Yes. Okay. And the first place we visited was Ghana National, mm -hmm. Albert Hammond. So we went there and said, oh. the wife of Albert Hammond knew me very well because anytime he visited the woman, Mm -hmm. I said them. Okay. So he said, what do you want? Then the woman answered, well, if I want a school. <laughs> so Wafakitwa will get a school. So eventually he wrote my name in the register. Okay. And I said, uh, I had only three days to go back to Cape Coast because the second, first time was almost ended. So I came, I got one or two things, I went to school. Cape Coast, and I joined the class. Mm. I was initially put to Swindu. National was not at the present uh, Cape Coast. A place. Mm. It was well, house in two houses. Okay. Swindu and uh, I was sent to Swindu, very close, to opposite yes, Wesley Guess. Then later, I was brought to the main campus. Mm. I was doing my practicals at uh, Adisca, Adisada as a science student, but I was still at the Ghana National. Mm. So National, Form 3, I must clear every prize in the school. Wow. <laughs> so when we go to Form 4, Form 5, I was forced to do even though I was a science student, mm. the history master would not allow me to go, Mr. Hagen. Okay. Because I was always winning the history prize. So I, as a science student, I added history to it. Okay, to your courses. Yes. And I passed all of them. So after I finished, okay. that year I took three exams. Okay. One, before then we were taking the six form entrance exam before the exam. I passed that one, mm -hmm. and I took the officer's cadet exam. Okay. Because I wanted to join the army. I wanted to join Commander, the army. Late Commander Mohammed was my classmate. Okay. I passed that one, and uh, I passed the Cambridge. I was, we were the last batch of the Cambridge school certificate. Okay. Which uh, year was that? 1959. Okay. And I passed that one. So when I passed all the three, my brother sat me down and said, look, mm -hmm. We are not going to the sales form. We can't get the money to sponsor you. Yeah. We have to go to training college. There you can get some allowance. Mm. Then I told him I want to go to Soja. <laughs> then he said, for me, 
Until I die, your foot will never step in the uh, military academy. academy. So I was forced to go to Wesley College. And become a teacher. Yes. Immediately on the day I entered the college, I spoke to myself, I'm going to go to invest with my mates. Okay. <laughs> Very ambitious young yes. man. So uh, I finished Wesley College, 61. Same year, I took the um, sixth form exam. Yeah. And I passed history, okay. but I couldn't get the geography and the economic history. Then I applied to Tech and Cape Coast. I gained admission to the two institutions. Okay. But I chose to go to Tech because I wanted to become a medical doctor. And I was told that I would do the one year prelim. So that convinced me. But while we were doing the one year, then another instruction came, we have to do two years. So I did two year course in science. So that was like a pre-course before the main university course. Yeah, pre-course before the university. Okay. And how many years will you? And that was one year. Okay, and then when you get to the university, yes, how many but years you spent? It was changed to two years at once. And then two years, I had to do the A-level. And I passed the three subjects, chemistry, botany, and zoology. And when I wanted to get to the medical school, I was told, if I get to the medical school, I can get steady leave. <laughs> so I decided to do a Greek. I was in a Greek faculty when one Dr. Anderson, a British, came to me and said, oh, Emmanuel, come and do biochemistry because it's a new course mm. in the world, so come. I just packed my thing. That, it wasn't at this time when the population is so large. Yeah. We were only, I joined the class, we were only six. Six of you, wow. So, I were didn't Were you the pioneering students? No, no, no. Okay. We were the third batch. Third batch, okay. In biochemistry. I did biochemistry. When I got to the third year, I wanted to change to chemistry. They said, look, we didn't do um, maths at the A-level, so you can do, you must graduate first. Mm. So when I graduated, because I was a trained teacher, I was on Sterling Eve, and I was sent to Takura, the GSTS, Takura, the Government Secondary Technical, to teach chemistry. Mm. I taught chemistry for a semester, or a term, that then we were using terms. Mm. And the tech wanted me to go back to do masters in microbiology. I went and that wasn't see that. So I joined the Winnie Bar Specialist Training College as a teacher. And at Winnie Bar I was teaching nutrition and food science and chemistry at the uh, home science department. Okay. The school the, there I had a real uh, story to tell. Can you share with us? <laughs> When I went there, the students were in passing. A class of 45, about two or three people will pass. What was the, the food, the, the food science and because two factors. One, the teacher or the tutor who was teaching, to me, he wasn't teaching well. He was only insulting the students. <laughs> two. Only insulting them. Two, they didn't have a syllabus he was following. Okay. So when I went, with the support of Dr. Rocket, Professor Rakatete Legon, mm. I drew a, a syllabus for them. Okay. And that year, at the end of the year, they scored 100% with three dissensions. Wow. So the headmaster saw me and said, how did you do it? The, head, the principal I said, by God's grace, because I was a strong SU member. Okay. So I was always preaching to them, doing everything, everything possible to help them. So at the end of the year, when I wanted to leave, and the head of the Home Science Department, mm -hmm. Mrs. Sanijagi, came to me and said, small boy, my son, <laughs> why are you leaving? You have been here to help us. I said, look, I'm leaving. So I left, and I joined Unilever okay. as their chemist. So I was 
put to laboratory, but before then I have to go around the whole factory mm. as a shift manager, learning everything. everything. So I learned soap making. Then came to the time we have to start margarine in Ghana. And I was sent to go and learn how to prepare margarine. Okay. So I came back with one white man. Mm -hmm. and which, I country? The, which country? Uh, yes, and, and the, I, I went to Nigeria, and Nigeria. the man came from Britain. Okay. And I was in charge. The man was the head, but I was the chemist in charge of it. So I have to travel around the whole country, trying to get the correct temperature for the Ghana made margarine. Mm. So for 30 years, I used the 30 years uh, temperature to assess the correct temperature we can use for the manufacture of the margarine. And that one, to be able to do that, you have to make a blend of the, the different types of oil or fat yeah. to get a suitable one. Then after we have finished the blending, you do what we call, uh, you test the hardening of it. And then we started. I was the first to taste Ghana made margarine. What was the name? Was it Blue Band? Blue Band. Blue Band. I was okay, the first so to taste. So you it. are the brain behind that project. Yes. Oh. And I introduced Blue Band, Wholesome, and then the, uh, what is the one I'm doing? I'm forgetting the name. Three of them, I introduced them. And all of you were enjoying it. <laughs> sure. <laughs> we're young though, but uh, I, remember, yes. I remember Blue Band. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. That's so, after four years, I left to join Nestle. But then they have started working, producing milk and other things in Ghana. It was called Food Specialities. So the day I spent, I submitted my application. Mm -hmm. The chief chemist was they said, "Go with him for interview." <laughs> so I follow him. And I have to do written interview before oral. And by God's grace, I was able to pass all. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I was there when he rang the factory manager. The boy is good. Let us employ him. So I went and I discussed with them how much I would earn. So immediately I got back to Liver Brothers. I put in my resignation letter. And that day I started my leave. So I was in the house when the late Mr. Hagen, my Hagen, sent for me. I went and said, Why? Not working well, why do you leave? I said, I'm leaving. So you finally left? So I went there to join Nestle as the chief chemist. Okay. And when I went to Nestle, the first assignment we gave me was to determine the correct temperature for sterilization of milk. Because they were producing milk, and after two or three weeks, it solidifies, it jellifies. And so that was the first assignment they gave you. Okay, Prof, let, let's take a short break. And when we come back, we'll continue. Thank you. Okay, so the program is Legends of Our Time on GBC News and Ghana Television. Our guest for today is Professor Emmanuel P.C. Mafo, a former executive director of the Ghana Standards Authority. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, we'll talk more. Don't go away. Welcome back. You're still watching Legends of Our Time on GBC News and Ghana Television. And my guest for today is a former executive director of the Ghana Standards Authority or the Ghana Standards Board, formerly. He is Professor Emmanuel Kwesi Mafo. Okay, Prof. So finally, you joined Nestle. 
share with us your legacies there? When I joined Nestle, formerly called Food Specialities, okay. the day I sent my application to the factory manager, the chief chemist was there, and the, chief, the factory manager told me, go with the man for an interview. So straight I went to the chief chemist's office. He pulled the question mm -hmm. paper and gave it to me to answer. Immediately I finished answering, he marked the, the questions there and then. Wow. And then he rang the factory manager to tell him, the more is good, let us employ him. Mm -hmm. So I was employed. And when I joined them, the first assignment was, they gave me was to determine the right temperature for sterilization of the milk, ideal milk. Ideal milk. Because they were producing ideal milk and three, four weeks, you see it jellified on the shelf. Okay. Becomes solidified. Solidified, okay. So, sorry, the correct term is jellification. <laughs> so, I work out and I found three temperatures. We send the temperatures to Switzerland, mm -hmm. the head office, maybe for them to select one. They are they were to select one because one of the temperatures, the milk becomes slightly brown. Okay. The other one is too pale, even though they all stand the test. And then they pick the one, and they are still using the temperature which I gave to them to do the asterization of the ID mark. Then we had a problem with Milo. We were producing Milo. Okay. And the problem, the Milo got spoiled, and we have to make use of the spoiled one. Mm -hmm. And we converted it into Choco Milo. Ah. And from that time, we realized that we could produce Choco Milo. <laughs> and the cubes, mm -hmm. which the children like. Thanks so much. Again, I used the Choco Milo to clean. We wanted to start production of um, Cerolac, uh, what do you call it? Um, Maggi. And I needed to clean the so when I used some of the choco milo to produce, the cubes were good mm -hmm. and attractive. Yeah. So they said, well, why don't we produce this for the market? So again, it's out of trial. Yeah. Wanting to clean the, uh, the, the equipment for the production of Maggi cubes, mm -hmm. we got that one. So that one also became a product, product. and we introduced it. Yeah. Then we were producing Cerolac, and I said, ah, we can add one more. Mm -hmm. Those of you who are a little old, we know of maize brick. Maize brick. Yes. I introduce it. Okay. So after I worked with them for a period, I had scholarship to go to Nigeria to study, mm. and I left them. Wow. I went to University of Ife in Nigeria um, to do chemistry, apply chemistry. So I finished my master's. When I got the second year, they wanted me to convert straight to PhD. I said, no, I want to finish. Probably something may happen. I would like to go back to my country with a, a degree. Mm. So immediately I graduated from, with my MSc, they advertised and applied, and they interviewed us, and uh, they appointed me as lecturer too. Because when they look at my background mm. with the industries, and they made a mistake during the interview, asking me questions. You know, the questions came from industry. Hmm. And because I've worked with it, knew uh, it was just, just rattling the answers to them. Hmm. So they employed me as yeah, lecturer right. two, and I was lecturing in chemistry. Hmm. Then they said, right, why don't you continue to do your PhD? So I did and the PhD. it took you one year? No. If I've done the conversion, that would have taken me one year. Okay. But because I finished the and Messi have to start. Hmm. And I finished in three years, but Masubasa left me. He went on sabbatical in the US. Okay. And I was waiting. So I started writing my papers. And when he came, I went in for the Bible and I passed. Then they employed me as a lecturer one. I lectured in the university for a period. 
and I decided to come back to industry. Ghana. So I came to U Ken UST as a lecturer. And then we started the food science department there now. So over the, I was there working as a lecturer, supervising students. And then one professor went to give, give a lecture. All of you, you may remember a product called Pocky. Yes, Pocky is like ice cream with different colors, yes. orange, Analyze blue, it. red. <laughs> Analyze it. Some slim. And I saw that they were adding saccharin to it. Okay. And I published it. And a lecturer from the university was giving a public lecture when he started some of these, my publications. Yeah. Then former head of state, Flag of the Reverends, His yeah. Excellency, sent for me that I should come. And when they said, look, we want you to draw the Ghana food law for us. Okay. So they come here and drop 600 up there mm -hmm. for two, three weeks. They will supply me with everything that I needed. Okay. Like what and what? Food, paper, everything. Mm. What about money? Oh, money, that one they didn't give me. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it was forgotten country. <laughs> so when I finished, mm. I invited people from the industry and food science department and to help me to discuss what I've written. Mm. And after we have finished discussing it, I sent it to the government with a common note, okay. and I left. When I went back to tech, I left for Canada. So I went to McGill University. I was there when they started looking for me again. Hmm. But fortunately, my wife didn't tell me. I wouldn't have come. <laughs> because I would have got a job over there. Okay. So I came back. And at the airport, my wife told me, the government is looking out for you. I said, what for? I don't own them anything. So I was there. I reported to the Santi Regional Minister. See, who are you? I say, I'm Rev. Mafo. My name is Rev. Dr. Mafo. Yeah. You, Dr. Mafo? Say, Tomorrow go to Accra. Yeah. I say, tell them I'll come on Wednesday. <laughs> so I was here on Wednesday, discuss with them, and say, we want you to come and head right. Ghana Standard Institution for us. Yeah. I said, look, I won't come because I've collected money from Canada. I want to do some research work. Okay. So I won't be able to come. So you have to come. Help us. So late, um, Nathaniel Kwao called me outside and said, look, small boy, try to come. Yes, these people will worry you. For three weeks, I was shuttling between Kumasi and Accra. Well, I didn't want to come. Mm. So I came and they gave me a note that they would not interfere with my wife because I gave them that condition. Okay. If they would interfere with my wife, I wouldn't come. They said, wouldn't they? So P.B. Ovin wrote that they will not interfere with my work. Okay. So reluctantly I came. And it's good that I came. Because Ghana Standard Board at the time, late Dr. Chum Dansu was the head, and he was old. Hmm. And people, they were doing firefighting. The problem would be here, and the government is for them to go and do it. I said, no, we don't work that way. So when I joined them, we met and we discussed and we had a real plan mm. for work. And I have five sections, laboratory, standards, inspectorate, administration, and then the um, technical section, those who were doing the uh, uh, ordinary uh, work for the Gardening and then mm. five. And then later when I added one, metrology. So okay. it became six. Because metrology we needed standards, I mean the measurement, the, the in the market we go there, people use a run car and this and say look. Run car has no place in standardization. Mm -hmm. So we're going to use weighing scales. Mm. Unfortunately I was discussing with the government and then I left. Mm. When the Methodist University wanted, the Methodist wanted to start the university, then they say, hey, you are a minister, come on. 
start the university for us. Mm. So they appointed me as the coordinator for the Methodist University. For the Methodist University. Yes. But let's quickly go back to the uh, Ghana Standards Board. Good. Yeah, at the time. Um, when they gave you the job, what kind of um, mandate were you given? You know, that to make the place, I mean, I was effective because it is a strategic institution. Yes, I was the chief executive. Mm. And the government gave me a free hand okay. to work. Mm. No interference. That one I give credit to late Flavius Lawrence. Mm. He, never a day because he kept his word. Mm. And I'm happy he did. Okay. So for 10 years, I was with them. And when I got to the standard board, I made sure that they rule standards. Because Before you get there, let's quickly take another break and then when we come back, we'll talk okay. about your achievements there. It's still legend of our time on GBC News. We'll take our last break and when we come back, we'll conclude this interview. Please stay. Hello, welcome back. The program is still Legends of Our Time on GBC, and it is the only platform that we bring you up to speed what's happening with our achievers. My guest for today is Professor Emmanuel Kwesi Mafo, a former executive director with the Ghana Standards Authority, initially the Ghana Standards Board. Okay, Prof, so let's look at uh, um, your activities at the Ghana Standards Board, I mean, formally. Ghana Standard uh, the Ghana Standards Authority. I know you are one of the longest serving uh, chief executives of the, the area. Uh, share with us what were some of the key projects that you Good, thank you. There. I had very competent staff, but they needed leadership. Direction. So I organized them and Mr. Larry Rianke was in charge of standards writing. And I have one Mr. Hesse in charge of the laboratory. And Mr. Boatin was my deputy. And Mr. F.K. Donko was second deputy in charge of administration. Boatin was in charge of technical. Okay. And Bo interestingly, Boatin was my senior tech. Mm. And uh, when I was a first year student, Mr. Donko was a, a teacher. Ah, <laughs> so you worked with your lecturer. I was working with my seniors. <laughs> your seniors, yeah. Yes. And so I made sure that each and every one worked. And the laboratory, we were analyzing everything in the system. Okay. And the, the inspectorate will go to the market. It's that inspectorate section of it is now what we call the food and drug board. Okay. Where they were doing that job. Mm. So they will go in the town, collect the samples, and the laboratory will work on them. Okay. During my time, we had World Bank um, grant to establish the food and uh, the, 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 the drug session with Mrs. Wahineman as the head. Okay. And we became the training center for Africa. Wow. During my time. During your time. And then we introduced the metrology. And then the, I built a workshop. I wanted to train our carpenters, our fitters, because they were they produce without measurement. Mm. When you buy a door from here, mm. go and put in the one, it won't work. So I, and unfortunately, mm -hmm. I couldn't equip it when I left because the church wanted my services elsewhere. Okay. And when I was there, I built a, labor, a, a, a library for them. They didn't have a library. 
I built a library and a clinic using the internally generated funds. funds. And this area, where you saw the standard uh, estate, mm -hmm. I acquired the whole area for them. Okay. Because they told me they wanted to get uh, land to build, and they didn't have. When they were sharing the, the selling the East Legon land, they were there. They couldn't buy any. <laughs> so I asked them whether they would like to go to Tema. Mm. They said, well, anywhere we get. So I went to Tema TDC. Mm -hmm. Fortunately for me, the managing director at the time was my whole mate at King University. And we went to Jimpa also together and we were mates. Mm. So I told him, oh boy, I said, oh boy. <laughs> I said, oh, I need a land. How much do we need? I said, yeah. 10 acres. But he gave me more than that, and I pay for. Oh. And that is why we have the standard estate. Oh, okay. And I gave it to the staff. When I gave it to them, they said, that first come, first serve. Yes. But in your case, even though you haven't spent so much time with us, we give you one because it's through you that we have been able to <laughs> get it. And they gave me one this time. Yeah. So when I was through the stand, I trained more people, scientific, both scientific and the uh, technical and non-technical st staff. And uh, the typists uh, made a ruling that if you don't have O level, no promotion. No promotion. You wanted your people to go to school. Yes. I was insulted left and right. Mm -hmm. But they thought they saw the wisdom in it. When some of them passed and I asked them to go to Polytechnic mm. to do further studies. further studies. And some went to Legon to do further studies. Interesting, a carpenter became a graduate. Wow. And one of the technical staff in the laboratory hmm. became an accountant. Hmm. You see, then the staff saw that I have taken a, brought in a really good suggestion and they follow it. And I had scholarship for my technical staff more than any other period hmm. because I would go to the scholarship secretariat, I was seven on it. And then arrange to get us and I write to Castle that <laughs> I need to train these people. <laughs> and immediately Nathan Akwao sees my letter, then you know that already granted. Already granted. Yes. <laughs> and so I train more people, mm. masters, PhD. Mm. Than any other because because of that when I go out, I was able to boost. I had better staff than any other institution in Africa. Mm. And it was true. So I became the president of the ASU, African Standard Institutions, whole Africa, I was the president. Because one, when they visit Ghana, they see that things were moving in the right direction. And I thank God that late Mr. Solome was a good friend, but he helped me a lot. When universities were talking about money, I'll go to He told me, don't come to me during working hours. <laughs> I'll go to him, 5.30, 6 o'clock. We sit together, we discuss, and then the following week, I'll get the money I needed. That's why we built When I went, it was for a small area. Now you get to there, and you see mighty, mighty, mighty buildings. Yes, because I was working. He told me, you, when we give you the work, the money, mm. you use it for the purpose. Mm. So again, Get to the area, we see that there's landscape. I hired a, a, a horticulturist to do the landscaping for us. And they did. Making the place very beautiful. Because I saw that when I visit other institutions, they have beautiful compound. I have to do the same, uh, do same in my institution. Yeah. So I did. And uh, fortunately, I was the first Ghanaian to head African uh, standard institutions. Okay. First one. And I had work up work, work, the, um, the World Bank money. When they granted it, see, when you write a letter, you have to pass it through the Minister of the Trade. Mm -hmm. And they told me, what, Maf, send us a copy ahead of time. Mm -hmm. So when I send it to the Minister, I'll copy them. Before the Minister will respond, they have already given me the response. <laughs> so when they end at the end of the period, they renew it, oh. and I left. I need the, I left everything to them. You see, God has been so gracious to me. 
my, my, the, my, the best which is always guiding me. Colossians 3, 23. Whatever you have to do, do it as unto the Lord. So anywhere you put me, I'm not working for man. I'm working for, I'm working God. for God. Hmm. And I do the best I can. Hmm. I did the same thing when I was at a national tech. I did the same thing when I was a tutor at Winneba. Anyway, and Unilever, I did the same thing. When I went to Nestle, I did the same thing. And when I went to lecture at uh, University of Hitfe, the day I was leaving, my head of department came to me and begged, stay on and help us. Because any professor whose child finds difficulties in uh, chemistry, go to uh, Dr. Mafu. Oh. If I teach you, chemistry and you don't understand it. You will never understand chemistry. <laughs> that one, I, 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 I claim the credit to the glory of God. I have the patience to teach it. And I will use different methods to enable you to understand it. I'm an organic chemist. So I'll use every method I can to help you. So that's my relationship with uh, Ghana Standard Board, yeah. Nestle, Unilever. And now the method is messy. I was appointed the direct, the coordinator. So anything concerning the university, I wrote it okay. for the tertiary committee to discuss it. And my chairman was late Professor DeGraff Johnson with uh, a brand of fun on the committee, okay. Professor late Dr. Professor Champon and the rest. Yeah. The church wasn't giving money. So late, most reverend Dr. Santiempi was there when I've written to all the dioceses and I gave him a copy. I went to him and said, Presiding sir, I want to go around to raise funds. Say, how can you do that? I have already written to the bishops. I've told every bishop to give me four big churches. I'm going to do that. I started from second day, went round, 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 round. The, the last one was Tamale. When I was going to Tamale, they said, oh, what are you going to do Tamale? Because you always send money to them. I said, I will go. They said, well, you might not even get your transport back. I said, I will go. I went and I came back with 13 million. Physical. Hmm. They didn't believe it. They did not believe it. So say, how did you do it? I said, it's God who did it. I had Professor Mensah, Professor Jau, hmm. who were there to help me. And I were able to. And then accreditation, because I was with the Standard Board, I knew almost all those who matter. The, the key players. Yes. I was attending meetings with them. So when I went for the accreditation, the letter, the man who was in charge drafted the letter together with me, drafted it and gave it to me. Look, do you agree with it? I said, yes. I took it. They were having conference when I sent it to the presiding bishop. They didn't believe their eyes. But because my relationship with people, when I was a chief executive, I was all over, and I was again advising the government on matters concerning drugs and food. Okay. Uh, I was attending the cabinet meetings to advise the government, and at times I go to the uh, parliament, the science committee, mm -hmm. to advise them on issues. So during my 10 or 10 years, I served my country. Yes, I said my Ghana. country. And we are so Ghana. proud and grateful to And you. I have been, it's Ghana has been good to me and I've been good to Ghana. Mm. And I have served Mother Africa too. Okay. As the head of, the, 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 the president of the African Standard Institutions, I served mm. Africa. Okay. And I've served my, the world also in diverse ways. In diverse ways. So, me, if I die today, God knows. <laughs> You've I've done your best. <laughs> my generation, I've served my generation sure. to the best of my ability. Sure. Well, you know, we have to be wrapping up, but let's quickly uh, focus on your, your family before we go. I know you've been married for over five decades. Yes. My wife is there, please. 
And that I want the secret behind this long-term union. I'm cutting it short. Mm -hmm. We married in 1959. Hmm. The day before our marriage, we had a terrible accident while people were waiting in our house. For us, we were involved in an accident. But thanks be to God, we only had a small cut here. Okay. No other person, but the car was completely destroyed. Oh, too bad. So when we went to Winnebar, my house was full with uh, Christian Fellowship members praying for us, singing and doing this. Then they saw a band around here. They said, what happened? We are, we are involved in an accident. Then they said, look, whether accident or not, tomorrow we shall do the <laughs> wedding. So the medical students okay. among them, work on her throughout the night. Okay. So the following day, the police wasn't swollen. Mm. And the lady who dressed her made sure it wasn't it sure. Cover it. But we started the marriage with debt. <laughs> we had to repair the car. Mm. And it cost us 475 Ghana cities that time. It was money. money. But thanks be to God, all is well that ends well. We are together. Mm. And we have got Seven children. Wow. How many boys and girls? Two boys. Five girls. One is a professor at the senior uh, university. Okay. The other one is an engineer working with British Electricity Company. Okay. And the girl, the senior girl, is a lecturer at Cape Coast University, senior lecturer at Cape Coast University. Okay. And the next girl has two clinics. Yes. Coil. He's a pediatrician. Okay two clinics and Tema here. Hmm. And then the other one is the Stambeck, the uh, senior staff. Well, what do you have a name for it? And, uh, She's a banker. It's a banker, yes. Okay. And then the other one is a consultant. Okay. And the last Bidi, mm -hmm. is a, uh, he's a lawyer practicing in Ghana. Wow. So all I have seven each of them has done something which is good. And uh, I don't have a problem with any of my children, of seriously. Morally, and then anything. anything. Because they were brought up in the fear of God. Fear of God. All of them. I don't have a problem with even one. Oh. And they're all very active. You only, if you were to go to uh, Richard, you see them. If you go to Presbyterian, you see them. My mother was a Presbyterian and a presbyter. He died in um, 1996. My mother grew up to see him, to see her. But my father died early. I don't know my father, please. My mother is also didn't marry again. I have seven, two, four brothers and three sisters. They are all gone. I'm the last of my parents, my, both my father and mother, I'm the last. When I leave, they are finished. Mm -hmm. So I'm the last one. Okay. So let me ask you, what is the most memorable period of your life? Hmm. Memorable period of my life? I think I would say the day when I got married because of the accident, I always remember that it hadn't been God's grace or favor, would have died, two, two of us would have died the same day. So I always remember it. Mm. And the next one is when I was with Ghana Standard Institution. Okay. I went to home to open a, an office. One of my senior members organized the staff to go and riot. <laughs> so when I came, my secretary told me, Sister Higgin, Dorothy Higgin, I love my heart for her, that woman, a wonderful woman. So I came and I called a meeting for all the staff. And anytime they ask a question, I ask that man. Mm -hmm. Who organized him? And they will answer. And then they saw that indeed he was aware of whatever was happening. And he turned around to say that he, you know, 
because I've just come from the university, I was trying to do well, look, no, please, that is a time I remember so much. I opened an office in Sunyani and Temale. By then they were having uh, three offices, Kumasi, Takradi, and Koforudia. But I had three more. And uh, I think, make sure that all the uh, offices were well staffed. Mm. Because whatever, I told them the heads of those offices were representing me. And therefore, I need to make them comfortable. So those who didn't want to go initially, later I felt they, should li they would like to go there because they were enjoying it. I gave every station, every office a car to ensure that they worked. And during my tenure, Ghana Standard Board made a name. Once some people brought in uh, uh, corned beef, which were passport from from Egypt. Okay. Really, they came we saw, and it was news. <laughs> the Ghana Standard Board has been really active. Been very active. We did that, and then I burned this toffee, coffee, uh, toffee. What, what do we don't call it? Trophy. 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 Yeah. But it's but still around. Yes, because I've left the scene. Why? Is it that bad? You see, it's bad. You know the chicken I read on the, uh, the turkey, they are rare with hormones. Okay. And the hormones, the residual hormone is always stored that in the tail. The tail. Wow. And no matter how you cook it, you still get a remnant of it. And what will it do to you, the consumer? That's why when those who eat it a lot, they soon bloat up. If you get to Europe and America, you see those Danians who are eating chicken regularly, and they, be, they bloat up when they come and you see that. It's, and that's why many of these our people are suffering from cancer. So those ch imported chicken are not good? It's not good. To me, if I have my own way, I'll burn it. If I have my own way, I'll burn it. I'm not destroying anybody's business. Sure, we need to speak the truth. But the health of Ghanaians should be supreme. If I have my way, I'll burn it. And encourage our people to produce the local ones. It's cheap. Those of you who have relatives or relations who are outside Ghana, those in Britain, US, when they can, you see? Obolo? Yes. I will say because of the hormone. They bloat up, and it's not safe. So that I will trophy, not. That trophy product. Yes, not only trophy, even the chicken by itself. Okay. Because I'm saying that the, the residual hormone mm. is always stored in the fat. In the fat. And the tail is fat, fatty. It's fatty. And when we continue to consume. Oh Jesus! I won't do it. I won't eat it. When I burn in one man, it will get to uh, uh, what do you call it? Achimota police station. There's a coal factory, a coal store. Mm -hmm. um, when I burned it, I went to Sweden for six weeks. And the man had the courage to come to my duty to collect a note that his was on the high sea because I gave them two, two weeks moratorium. Mm. And my duty didn't know, so he gave them. He gave him the note. Spent six weeks when I came, four weeks more, ten weeks. Then the man, the, 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 the what he imported came. He has raised bank loan to import large quantity of it to make a, uh, a windfall. He went to the harbor and the custom said, no, it's banned. They, they wouldn't allow him to clear. He said, I have a note. So it wasn't signed by Reverend Marfu. When the man came to me, he looked at him and said, but if even it was on high sea, if you have ordered from China, mm. if you have come by now. Four weeks, you can't. So you go to one, this minister, the minister will ring, oh, Reverend, can you try? And say, please, can you put in writing? Mm. And nobody wrote. And what happened to the product? We seized them, destroyed them, mm. and the man went mad. That's what I was told. Because the money has invested. Because he was in big debt. Mm. 
collecting money from the bank. So today we still have these products in the system. Why yes, has it become if too I were, difficult if for if I the were, food and drugs? If I were still in on, on the seat, you wouldn't mm. get it. You know, formerly they were using sodium bromate for baking. I yes. banned it and introduced ammonium and the carbonate. Wow. So ammonium sodium bromate is hazardous to the body, to the health. What does it do in our body? Yes. It can also affect the spleen, the kidney, the uh, liver. The liver. Okay. Our organs. Yes. I ban it. The people came to my office with gun gun and those things. I didn't bother. You are they really said, you are a bad mini mental minister. You are going to report to it. <laughs> I said, it doesn't matter. I did. Because you are health to me. God will ask me, all of you, when I was the chief executive, what did you all do? of you, all of you here, if you die of anything resulting from what you have eaten, God will ask me, you were the head. Why did you allow it to come to the system? Hmm. And I couldn't answer. With this in mind, I was always very particular about what I do. And I thank God I did the right thing. Well, nobody has raised a finger after I've left. So what, 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 what advice would you give us, the young ones coming up, um, in our chosen professions to yes. excel like you did One. when you were working for Madagascar? You see, if you're a child, you have a child who is to go to university, always try to find his, his or her interests. Not because this one do this course would you get a job to do or you get money, no. That's the first thing. Two, when you have children, make sure that they know Christ. Every one of them. Every one of them. Pray with them in the morning, pray with them in the evening. Even when they are in the stomach, in the belly, science has told me that the, the song you like, you like most if you sing it in the house and your wife delivers, the child will like it. Mm -hmm. So always make sure that children know Christ. And I thank God that I've never departed from this policy. Mm -hmm. The third one is encourage your children to work hard. Encourage them and to be honest. My mother was a hard woman. He's a, you make him work. And if you lie to her, the way he beat you, you never lie again. And I use that one. When my children were young, if you lie, they would let them say, let them beat you. Tell the truth and you go scot free. So I instill discipline and honesty into them. No. I can tell you with all sincerity, I've worked for 50, 50, almost 50 to 60 years. I've never collected a password from anybody. And nobody, if I put me on the stage, say, they don't know my this, anybody has collected a password from, come and tell him and he refund it. As uh, uh, not even one. Because I don't want to disgrace my God. My God is able. Please, those of you who are Christians, I'm telling you this. The, the God we worship is able. Put your trust in him, yeah. and he will never let you down. So that is the third one I have. And uh, I'm happy. To, my wife has been a really supporter. All this has been supporting me, really, very, really. <laughs> At one time, when I'm, I'm really busy, when we're starting the margarine, and I'm very busy, I won't talk. So he will also go for her book and read. Because the answer was yes, no, period. Because I was too busy. Too busy. Better Tema, I was in charge. I started it. Mm. I started uni Christian Fellowship in Tema. So many of the Presbyterian the ministers, many of the charismatic ministers, including our own Dr. Uh, Utabu. Okay. They were all from the Christian Fellowship. Hmm. We helped them. We helped them to understand the Bible. 
Assembly of God, I can say about six of their ministers are from the fellowship mm. and the Methodists. So please take your God seriously and take you seriously. I have never regretted and I will never regret until I get to the grave. Even there, God will meet me. I don't know want. I don't have the money, but I don't know want. I don't know what is called want. Hmm. God always supplies. Your needs. This house, I got the plot, only God knows. Out of their generosity they gave me, and I built it. I have my house in Kumasi. Big one. There, everywhere there. It won't be in the room like this. It will be outside. You can have a lot of trees around. Sure, sure, sure. My last question, uh, Professor Mafo, finally, how would you want to be remembered by what? future generations? One, the church, I want the Methodist Church to remember me for what the services I've rendered to the church. Okay. I started Better Methodist Church. The uh, Anders Gate and, and, uh, Society. Anders and Kumasi, go to Mount Zion. Okay. I transfer the, transform the church into a play, something they can never forget. When I went there, their school was in a, under a shed. Go there and see. I transformed it to a bit, beautiful school. Wow. 50 cities they were charging, people were not coming. Now, Admission fee alone is 200 and they pay. Because of the standard? The standard institution, at least this estate, number one. Number two, I make them to understand that the clinic over there, they have the clinic now and the library. I, I, I give them, I build the library and the clinic for them. And I really hired qualified people to mind it. Okay. The library, we have a librarian. The clinic, you have a nursing sister, and a doctor was coming there twice a week. Mm. So at least now they go there, and the buildings over there, you see, they will always remember. Mm. And the day I think if we're running were to be alive, he will remember me. And uh, oh. <laughs> the rest, because I supported him in every way possible, so far as the standardization is concerned. So my people will also remember, my children will remember me because I educated them all of them. Yeah. And my wife will also remember me because, <laughs> Grace, I hope you remember me. He spent quality time with her. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, I think when we went to South, Afri uh, South Africa, the pictures we had, I think, are very beautiful ones. And we went there to spend our holidays. Mm. So please, my wife, <laughs> I say thank you to her. It has been a wonderful wife for me, to be honest, I'm concerned. My Christian beliefs mm. and uh, my work, everything, you have supported me so much. Thank you so much, and Professor you Emmanuel Kwesi Mafo. Yeah. Indeed, we are so inspired but, uh, by what you've shared with us. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for coming. Spent with you. Okay, so it's been Legends of Our Time on GBC News and Ghana Television. Our guest for today has been Professor Emmanuel Kwesi Mafo, a former executive director of the Ghana Standards Board, currently the Ghana Standards Authority. And of course, he actually saw to the setting up of the Methodist University in Accra. My name is Gifty AJ. Thank you so much for watching. God willing, we'll come your way same time next week. Until then, bye for now.